Welcome back to another episode of Small Girl Big Talk, where we talk about all the big stuff in adulthood like self-identity, relationships, money, health, and all the other important things that you care about. I'm your host, Wendy, and my hope for this podcast is for it to bring comfort and help you to feel a little bit less alone in your adulthood journey. As my podcast started kicking off about a year ago, I find that I have finally found my routine as a content creator. Like I have been starting to get recognized for my podcast or the content that I've been putting out there. I've been invited to attend events that are designed for influencers or content creators. I have been having brands or other content creators reaching out for collaborations. Like I feel like my identity as a content creator has finally shown and or in a way like settled into my current lifestyle. And I have to say, imposter syndrome is still a thing that I constantly am still struggling with. Um, But having said that, I also feel like I have learned to be, you know, to be better at dealing with this imposter syndrome. And I feel like what has truly helped me to land this current position that I'm in, like from someone who didn't believe that I can be a full-time content creator. And disclaimer, I'm still not a full-time content creator, but I feel like I am really paving my way towards it um, I feel like what has helped me to really get here is because I have truly aligned with the identity that I want to have and so today in this episode I want to share with you two things number one is how I think the alignment of my identity has helped me to deal with imposter syndrome and secondly how can you find your identity and build confidence in your journey, whether it's as a content creator or as an entrepreneur. Now, first thing first, I do want to emphasize that your identity is not defined by what you do in your career. Like besides your job title, you can also identify as straight woman, Malaysian, like there are a lot of aspects about you that can define your identity. So you can have multiple identity that you feel aligned with. But what I'm trying to say is that when you don't have things right, when there is a misalignment, you may feel out of place and you may feel like, like you may question who you are, or what is your purpose and what's your whatever, whatever. Like you may deal with quarter life crisis if things are misaligned. So let me just give you an example. When I was living in Vancouver as an international student, I always felt like I never truly belong. Like I'm not a Canadian. That is not a place that I grew up with. And there are a lot of things about the culture that I needed to learn and understand And when I finally left that country and come back to Malaysia, I also had a reverse culture shock where I felt like I still did not belong as a Malaysian because I have also had exposure from a different culture and I've lived in that place for four years and I now have a new identity, a new belief, new understanding about myself. And I felt like this was also actually one of the contributors of my depression back in 2017. And that's why I felt like when there is a misalignment in your identity, it can really cause a lot of pressure and distress. And you see, the example that I just gave you is in terms of like nationality and who you identify the closest with in terms of the culture and your belief system as a person. And now coming into, say, your career or your job title, like in terms of your identity in that sense, I felt like the similar things 
happened to me in my content creator journey as well. Like I started my content creator journey through blogging. And then eventually I also got into making YouTube videos. And about the same time, that was when, you know, the term influencer and the idea of influencer marketing just started. It became a thing. And somehow bloggers and YouTubers became synonymous with influencing. But I never felt like I was trying to be an influencer because I had small numbers and I've only worked with a handful of brands before. And it really took me a while to figure out that what I truly am is actually a content creator. Like I create content because I enjoy sharing my stories, my experiences, or, you know, just the thoughts that I have in my mind. I love that when I share them with my audience and when people respond and engage and tell me that they feel the same, like that's what I thrive on. And I never really created content to influence or to try to be an influencer to promote people's things or to sell people something. While I do think that influencing is a byproduct of content creation, like if I do have a good content and if people do like me as a content creator, I may have a power of influencing them. But yeah, when I settled for the title as a content creator, I felt so at peace and at home with who I am. So as I show up and truly embody this content creator self and just do what I'm good at, I feel like I've become more and more confident in introducing myself to people as a content creator. Like I feel like it helped me to show up consistently online to put up content that feels truly aligned with who I am. And because I feel so aligned, I have noticed that the energy has shifted and I'm, I've been able to attract a lot of good things coming my way that kind of like further reinforce this identity as a content creator. But I do have to say, it took me years to get to this point. I think like at least about seven and eight years since I graduated from university, like I've been trying to figure out everything to get to this point. And today, I kind of just want to share with you the things that I've identified that has helped me to truly get to this point. And I think may be able to help you to find your identity as well. Now, the first thing that you want to know is you really have to allow yourself to spend time on self-discovery. Like over the last 10 years since my university days to moving back to Malaysia and, you know, to deal with adulthood and to deal with my mental health issues, I actually had PTSD. I had major depressive disorder. Like I was going through a lot in my head and that has truly forced me to go through a lot of self-discovery. And honestly, I don't think you need to have depression or anything like that to be forced to go through this. I feel like everybody, like your 20s and your 30s, are meant to be spent on self-discovery, in understanding who you are as a person, to ask yourself questions like, who do you want to be? What do you want to be known for? Or what is your purpose? And what is your passion? Like, I feel like you should be asking these questions by doing things, by meeting new people and discovering things about yourself through your relationships with everyone else, by trying new sports or new hobbies to discover what you like and what you don't like. And I really think that I know a lot of people, they are often very lazy or they just find it very hard to get out of their comfort zone, right? But if you think about it, if you don't take your 20s and your 30s to spend on self-discovery, like what, you're going to wait till your 40s and 50s and then regret not 
taking the time to really get to know yourself better to do what you want or what you like in your life like why are you trying to do that to yourself you should take time to discover to get to know yourself and another big thing that I've learned only in the last two years that I feel like has helped me to align in terms of my self-identity is self-acceptance, like radical self-acceptance. Um, the two books specifically that I felt like has helped me a lot in this um, are The Courage to be Disliked and also Living Untethered. I'm going to list both of these books in the show notes because I felt like they have helped me a lot. And so in the past, I've always been very caught up in my head with all this narrative that I've been telling myself. They're kind of like limiting beliefs that I used to tell myself. And here are a few examples of the things, right? Number one is I'm not pretty enough to be a content creator because back then... All the famous content creators, they all look a certain way or they act a certain way. The second limiting belief that I have is, you know, I did not have enough followers. So I felt shy to tell people that I spent most of my time creating content for my small number of followers and I'm not even really making money from it. Another thought that I had was I don't have good enough camera and or editing skills, um, that my content is really basic and it's not really creative. And lastly, the true imposter syndrome question that a lot of people always have, and that is, who am I to be talking about XYZ? Or who am I to be teaching about this specific topic? Right, these were all the narrative that I used to tell myself, all the limiting belief that I used to have. And I'm going to tell you, like, I am not a fan of the idea, fake it till you make it. Because I feel like when you are faking it, you know that what you are sharing is not true. You know that you are faking this confidence and you still feel insecure inside. But rather, what is going to work, it's practicing radical self-acceptance on who you currently are. You know, like even though you embody this self-acceptance, you know that this is your current reality, but still you embody your dream self to rewrite your narration. So there are a lot of thought work that you would need to do to rewrite what you are telling yourself in your head and to change the way that you think, which in order would kind of help you to change your behavior that comes with it. So let's go back to the limiting belief that I have and how I was able to kind of coach myself out of it to kind of like rewire everything that I used to tell myself. So number one, I used to think that I cannot be a content creator because I'm not pretty enough. I mean, if you think that I'm very beautiful and you think that I'm lying to myself, I'm going to tell you thank you because I appreciate that. Um, But according to my personal beautiful standard, I do think that I have an average look. I don't think I'm I'm ugly, but I do think that I just look average. I may not be at a certain beauty standard, but I know that I'm not the prettiest girl, Um, you know. And in, in a realistic way, not a pessimistic way, I do think I'm pretty in my own way. But anyways, what I'm trying to say is, even though I may not be the most pretty girl out there, I think this is exactly what my strengths are because we need more content creator out there that looks like me. You know, we need more Asian, Southeast Asian women that is confident enough to put themselves out in front of the camera so that other people feel like uh, me as a content creator is actually relatable because they see themselves in the screens out there. Another thought that I used to have is that I don't have enough followers and I just need to remind myself that my intention to create content is to help people feel less alone in their adulting journey. And as I focus on the depth of influence that I can get through talking to you in my podcast like that, through going deep into the emotions that I have, into the thoughts that I have, that's all that 
truly matters. Because I also believe that when I am sincere, when I am genuine in all the content that I share, you guys are going to love it. And you guys are going to share it with your friends and family that you think is going to love this. And my followers would eventually grow as well. Third thing that I thought about, like, you know, that I didn't have good enough camera or editing skills. Okay, we are trying to be a content creator by sharing the messages that we have. And that is the key point. It's not about like, you know, the visuals or the fancy, fancy stuff because I'm not trying to be an Oscar winning filmmaker over here. I'm just trying to be a good friend of yours that is trying to reach out to you through the screen or the speakers. So that's all that matters. Why was I thinking so much into that? And lastly, the question of who am I to be teaching or talking about XYZ? Like, I just need to remind myself that while I don't have a PhD on this specific topic that I'm talking about, I am genuinely, sincerely, honestly sharing with you about my own experiences and my learnings that may help someone else who might be going through similar experiences and may need to just have someone else talk to them about this to help them to get through their problems. So there you have it. Like this were how I was able to kind of like coach myself out of all these limiting beliefs that I have as a content creator because I practice radical self-acceptance that I know who I am, I know where my strengths and weaknesses are, and I work with them instead of denying them and faking that I have it all together. And lastly, I wanted to just remind you to always focus on your intention. Like at the end of the day, when you are aware of who you are and why you are doing what you are doing, you will start to have the confidence and convictions in the things that you want to do. And that is going to give you so much more confidence to keep on going. Imposter syndrome will always come to you at different phases of your life because us as humans, we will constantly be seeking to grow and improve ourselves. And the world out there is like, they will always find a way to tell us that we are not good enough or that there are something else that we should be comparing ourselves to. Like there will always be be something that's brighter, shinier out there that may affect our self-esteem. So you need to always create ways to remind yourself of your intentions, whether it's through a daily meditation session or journaling or just having conversations with your friends that can help you to reassure yourself of your intentions and remind yourself of what you truly want in life, that is going to really help you to stay grounded on what you truly stand for. So there you go. I just wanted to share with you this today because I truly believe that your alignment with your identity, it really determines the confidence and security that you have in yourself. So by allowing yourself to spend time on self-discovery, by practicing radical self-acceptance and really just focusing on your intentions, you are going to be just all right. When you are aligned with your current identity, you are going to feel the energy that you exude, like it starts to lift up and higher and higher and that is going to start attracting all the good stuff coming your way. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. You know, I am really happy that I'm at a stage where I'm so at peace and happy with, you know, this content that I'm creating out there, with the people that I'm meeting in the content creation journey, with the engagement that I'm getting on social media, or the messages that I'm receiving in terms of all this content that I'm putting out there, like I am beyond grateful 
of this platform that I've created, and that you have, you know, come into this community to really contribute as well. So I want to take this chance to thank you for being such an amazing, lovely community that I have, and I hope to see you in my next episode. Goodbye.